riding on a love like Uh, good morning everybody and today i just want to speak to you about uh, what happened when you spend more time with god uh, with um, everything in our own life before we got a lot of things going on and sometimes we just forget or we might not put god first in our life and during this uh, pandemic and while everybody was at home we have to be at home there was no other choice so I personally have an opportunity to spend more time with God and then during that time I, I have the grace to start speaking to him. Yeah, I believe that when you spend more time with God that you get you get much closer to him. Miracles can happen. You get you can get filled by the Holy Spirit. I believe that was the power of God, filling with the Holy Spirit. I had the opportunity to spend more time with him. 
and one of the thing that I explain is uh, speaking tongues because before when I hear people speaking tongues, I was like, wow, that is so beautiful. I wish I can do that, but I think that I wasn't able to do that at the time because I wasn't close to God enough. And now that I've spent more time with Him, everything is possible. And then all I did is just put my trust in Him. And that day is not like I woke up that day. I said, okay, today I'm going to spend time with God and start praying in tongues. No, it didn't happen that way. I was just listening to a reading online and then listen to a pastor. And at the end of the at the end of uh, the preaching, the, I just one while everybody was praying, I just start speaking in tongues. It was for me it was a wow. So <laughs> even realize what was happening. But I was so happy. So and just what I'm gonna say is uh, with everything going on, even though we're so busy, busy all the time. And most of you will know me that like, I'm always busy at work and doing this and doing that. You can have sometimes put a um put a pause, if I can say that. Put a pause and so no, I need to concentrate on God first before anything else. As he said, we have to put our trust in him. Don't put our trust on ourselves, but on him, not us. Not to worry about anything. But let everything into his hands because he's in control. I is really marvelous. I can't there's so many things that happen to me that really is unbelievable. Uh today I just give him praise. I just give him praise for everything, everything that happened to my life and and hope Anyone else can have the same feeling, can explain the same thing as me. Thank you very much. <laughs>
another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. He is faithful, he is true, and he's called us. My message today is on the call of God. The call of God. Exodus chapter 3, 7 to 12. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the people of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. For when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. God appears to Moses with Horeb. He reveals himself as the God of the patriarchs, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. And as the God who remembers his promise, his promise to Abraham that he would make his name great, that he would make him a great nation, give him the land. He's the God who keeps his promise and the God who acts to save. He still is the God who acts to save, to deliver, the God who intervenes. God never forgets his promise. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is always with us. He is faithful. And he calls us to be faithful to him. His purpose is to create a people for himself through whom he will be glorified. Through whom he will reveal himself to the world as a faithful God. God sees the suffering of the people and he takes the initiative to deliver. Moses tried to sort the matter out himself when he killed the Egyptians. But he ended up in the desert, he had to flee. He ended up on his own, forsaken, outside of the purpose of God, seemingly. But you know, in the desert, it's a good place to be, because in the desert he meets God. It's a good place to be when we're away on our own. We can hear God. God speaks to us in the time of need. God speaks to us in the time of desperation. He calls us. He called Moses as he's looking after the sheep. And he calls him to go back, to go back to Pharaoh, challenge Pharaoh, the ruler of the most powerful nation of the time, to say, let my people go. God says, come now therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt, the people he chose, to whom he gave the promise. Sounds fine, doesn't it? But Moses says, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He's asking two obvious questions. First of all, how on earth is Pharaoh going to be convinced? A simple man like me coming back, challenging the most powerful ruler, of course, God's answer is the signs, the plagues. First of all, the snakes, he casts his staff on the ground before Pharaoh and the magicians. His staff turns into a snake. They copy the trick, but Moses' snake devours theirs. And then the plagues, the plagues that God sends to show his power over all the gods of Egypt. But the second question, how will the people be convinced? How will the rulers of Israel be convinced? Again, God later tells Moses, two signs he gives him. Well, one is the snake, of course, and the other one is to put his hand into his cloak 
and to take it out and it turns leprous and then to put it back in and it is healed. Only God can heal. Only God can do miracles. But the biggest question is in those two. The biggest question is how will Moses himself be convinced? It's all right convincing Pharaoh. It's all right convincing the leaders. But how will Moses himself be convinced? You see, if we doubt that God has called us, God cannot use us. God can deal with Pharaoh and he can deal with the people. The signs that he's going to give are pretty convincing. Although, of course, we do know as we read the story that the hardness of their hearts hides God's judgment from them. They don't recognize it. Their hearts are hardened. But Moses has to accept the fact that he is called. He is the one to deliver Israel. God uses people. God works through people. He is the one who God wants to use. It's easy for us to believe that God can. Well, is it? How big? your God? How big is God to you? Do you believe that God can do all things? Do you recognize that He is the creator and ruler of the universe and nothing is impossible to Him? But even that, in comparison, is easy to believe, but it's hard to believe that God can use you, that God can use me. When we look at ourselves with all our shortcomings, with all our failings, who am I? Don't we often ask that question just like Moses? Who am I? What are my qualifications? Surely there's someone better, somebody who can do better, somebody more called, more anointed. Remember, anointing comes from God, not from us. We're not self-anointed, self-appointed, but called by God. Aaron can speak better than me. I'm not eloquent. But God says to Moses, I will send you. You know, looking at Moses as he leads the people, out of Egypt, we get why him? Why him and not Aaron? Why him and not some of the other leaders who doubt and rebel? God looks for someone who is faithful to him. He isn't interested in our qualifications because everything that we have comes from him anyway. Anointing comes from him. He is looking for those who will be faithful to him and put their faith in him. But Moses is not just faithful to God, he's faithful to the people, the people who he's been called to lead. He is willing even to sacrifice himself. When God says to him, I will destroy this people and make a nation out of you, Moses says, no, no. Spare these people for your own name's sake, for your promise's sake, spare them. Take me rather than them. See, true leadership is not about you, it's not about me, it's about those who we lead. True leadership is about those who you are called to lead. So what sign does God give Moses? It's not the leprosy, it's not the snake, those are the signs for the others. Verse 12, so he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. You in the plural, you as a nation, you as a people, you and them, together, will serve me. As an average human being, I have two problems with that. First of all, how will I know? How does Moses know? How would I know that God is with me? I can't see God. God is invisible. Secondly, how can something in the future be assigned to me now? Something that is yet to come, how can it be a sign now? The answer to both questions is the same. Faith. Faith in God. Faith in His faithfulness. Faith is trusting God, depending on Him. Trusting in His promise, believing His word. We human beings want to see. We want to know the future. That's why the world loves clairvoyance and astrologers and all these things. They want to know the future. They want to work it out. We spend our time working out things, planning, planning for the future, but the future is not ours, it's in God's hands. There's an old hymn that says, many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Right now, in this pandemic, right now in this situation, 
things that are happening in the world right now, we have lost control. The world has lost control. We can speculate, we can try to find solutions that our governments are doing. One thing we have to realize, we don't know. How long will this pandemic last? How long will we be restricted? What's coming next? Will our area be affected by the next lockdown? How will this ultimately be resolved through vaccination, tracking and tracing? When will we get on top of it? And what will be the effects, the long-term -term effects, economically, personally, mentally and emotionally? Effects on education, exams, career, jobs, businesses. Business people in particular are worried. But also people about redundancy as furlough schemes come to an end. I don't know how someone who doesn't know God would cope right now. I'm glad that I know the one who knows the future. And I know that he holds my hand. Really, this is nothing new. We've never known tomorrow. We've never known the future. We've tried to. We thought we did. We acted like we did. But as my father-in-law, his name is Solomon, the wise man Solomon, as he always says, if God spares my life, if God spares my life, if I live to see, a Muslim would say, Inshallah, if God wills, COVID has shown us that we, what we should already have known, we should have long known. Jesus said it in Matthew chapter six, reading verse twenty-five and then thirty-one to thirty-four. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? And then Jesus mentions the example of the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, how God takes care of them. And then he says, therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles, the unbelievers, seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, His purpose. And all these things shall be added to you. Then we do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. We spend much of the time we have. Much of our time, much of our effort, trying to know, trying to control what is actually out of our control. If we spend half that time seeking the one who does know, the one who does control, who holds not only today, but also tomorrow in his hand, how much better off would we be? How much better would life be? How much more would we know peace? If we could cherish the moment, lockdown or no lockdown, Crisis or no crisis, if we could cherish the moment and enjoy God's presence, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Life would be so much better. Paul writing from a Roman prison, not sure if he was going to live or die, what the outcome of his trial would be, whether he would be executed. But he could say to the people, he was called to leave, writing to them out of his prison cell, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. He wasn't concerned about his own life. He says to me, to live is Christ, to die is gain. If I die, I'm with him forever. He knew God, and he knew God's calling. He saw even imprisonment as an opportunity to be a witness to others, even his prison guards. And he knew that the one who has begun a good work in us will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He writes that to the Philippians in chapter 1 in his greeting. The one who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day. One day we will give up an answer for our lives, how we lived them, what we did with a few years 
allocated to us, those few years on earth, God is faithful. The question is, will we remain faithful to him? From his final imprisonment, knowing that this time for sure he would die, he was waiting for his execution. Paul writes, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 11 to 13, this is a faithful saying, for if we die with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. God called Moses. He called him to lead the people to himself. Moses was the signpost of God, the one to point people to God. He was to bring the people to that same mountain, Mount Horeb, where he met God in the burning bush. And there they would meet with him, with God. That would be the sign of his calling. It would be clear when they reached there. And we see that in Exodus 19, when they draw near to the mountain, and God appears. But there was a long journey. It was a long journey before they got there. Many troubles, many trials. We have a journey. Only faith in the Almighty God. Yahweh, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. And the one who acts, the one who keeps his promise, who acts according to his promise, will get us there on this journey. But that one. Yahweh, the God of the Old Testament, is revealed to us today in Jesus Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, the brightness of His glory. All the fullness of the God who dwells in Him bodily. Jesus says, when you see me, you see the Father. We've been studying Revelation in our Bible study. Do join us on the Wednesday at 8 o'clock. In his address, Jesus says, preparing the church for its last great time of testing. That time that lies ahead, Jesus says in Revelation 1 verse 8, I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. Who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. He is that one. He, Jesus, is the eternal one. And he is the one who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, brought us back to himself. He is that lamb who gave himself for us and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. The same words that God speaks to the Israelites at Mount Horeb in Exodus 19. He will make them a kingdom and priests a people to reveal him to the world, to glorify him, to reflect his glory. And he goes on to say, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him. One day everyone will recognize and he will reign forever and we who remain faithful to his calling will be with him. He calls us to himself. Moses was not just called to, called to meet God for himself. Moses, and we too, Moses was called to meet God for himself and to bring the people to God. The question is, who will you bring to God? Who will you be a signpost to? Who will you point to the eternal one? Who will you point to Jesus who died for them to bring them back into relationship? So that in this time of turmoil, in this time of fear, in this time of confusion, they may find peace and safety and eternal hope in Him. Who will you point to Jesus? That will be the sign of God's calling on your life. Your sign. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you that you have revealed yourself to us. We thank you that we have met you. Not on a mountain, Lord, but we've met you in your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. We thank you that you've opened our eyes.
just as you open Paul's eyes on the road to Damascus, to see you in glory, you've opened our eyes to see you, the risen Savior. We thank you, Lord, that you've taken our sin and restored us to yourself, and we can know you, live in your presence. Help us, Lord God, to trust in you. Help us to look to you because you alone are faithful. And help us, Lord God, that we may be faithful to you, put our faith in you, trust in you, depend on you. Believe you and obey you. Help us, Lord, to point others to you. Help us, Lord God, to answer your call to bring many to you. In Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you. Amen. Amen. God is calling you. If you haven't answered his call today, you can come to him and say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. Come into my life. Be my Savior. Wash me from my sin. Deliver me from my own self-will and pride and make me yours. May the Lord of peace be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's 
Greetings everyone. I pray that we've been having a good week so far and I pray that God will continue to bless us. I have a word of encouragement for our young people today and I am going to quote from 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12 and that says, Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. I know that we're facing some difficult time today. And I know it is also a very challenging time for young people in particular. But what I have to say today is don't be discouraged. Like the scripture tell us, don't let anyone look down on us. It doesn't matter where you may go, who you may come in contact with. Remember whose prized possession you are. Not because the world is saying you should speak a certain way or dress a certain way or react a certain way means that you have to do the same. Sometimes it pains my heart when I hear some conversations of, you know, some young people but i know that as long as you stand firm in christ and lean on god for guidance and protection i know that you won't fall prey to what the world is saying you must do set an example in the way you dress the way you speak the words you use be an example to others, to your peers, to people that are looking at you, to people in the community, even to other young people in church. Be that example. Don't be a follower, but be a leader. As long as you are a leader, you will be able to pull other young people to follow you and to you may be able to help them to understand what you believe in and help to bring another young person in Christ or to Christ, sorry. You go to school every day. You meet friends. Like I said, be that example. Be a leader. Be a follower. And God would take care of you. God would look over you. He would guide you. He would protect you. But you have to obey his word. I pray that the blood of Jesus Christ would continue to cover you in your going out and in your coming in. I pray that whatever you say and do on your day-to-day -day basis will bring glory and honor to God. Like the Bible said, honor God and he will honor you. 
I hope that this word would be a blessing to you and continue to stand firm. Continue to make God proud. Continue to make the church proud. Continue to make your parents proud. And most of all, continue to make yourselves proud. Be blessed. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Fox. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Good. What have you got there? You've got water there. I have indeed. Why have you got water? Well, can you work it out? Uh, We've done this before. What have you got in the box? Don't you remember? Is it paper clips? It's floating paper clips. Paper clips, that's right. Floating paper clips. Paper clips when you float on water. Uh, I think we tried it out. We tried it out, they couldn't yeah. float. But let me have a go there. That no, one didn't that float. Didn't float. That didn't float. No, it yeah. didn't float. It doesn't work just like that, does no, it? No. We need to do I something. Remember, I remember, we need the helper. We need the, help. the paper clip helper. helper, that's right. So let's get a paper clip helper. Okay, and see if we can get. There's the helper. Alright, there's the helper. So we take another paper clip yeah. and get the paper clip that we want floating. Somehow I have to balance it. Careful, careful. And I'm carefully careful. place Very it in the water. That's and it. there it is, it's it floating. Another That's one, right. another one. Another one. Floating. 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 <laughs> another one, another one, three paper clips. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> try again, really try careful. again, be very, very careful. Oh dear. Oh, oh dear. and that's fallen that's through. Fun. We've got to get this right. That's good, very careful. Um, Thanks. So basically we've one, got one, two, three paper clips floating. And three blue, yellow. And three that have sunk. <laughs> and three that sunk. Oh dear. Because yeah. they didn't have any helpers. No. Mm -hmm. Do you know why I'm showing you this again? We did a story about that. We did a story about um, being helped, didn't we? Right, Jesus being our helper, but yeah, today. Jesus helped Peter. He did, he helped Peter, didn't he? But today's story is about King David and he helped someone. King David helped someone? Who he did he help? Tell me the story. Okay, I'll tell you the story. This is a story of how David helped Mephibosheth. David asked, is there anyone still left in Saul's family? I want to show kindness to this person for Jonathan's sake. Now there was a servant named Ziba from Saul's family. So David's servants called Ziba to him. The king asked, Is there anyone left in Saul's family? I want to show God's kindness to this person. Ziba answered the king, Jonathan has a son still living. He is crippled in both feet. The king asked Ziba, Where is this son? Ziba answered, he is at the house of Machir, son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Then King David had servants bring Jonathan's son from the house of Machir, in Lodabar. Mephibosheth, Jonathan's son, came before David and bowed face down on the floor. David said, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth said, I am your servant. David said to him, don't be afraid. I will be kind to you for your father Jonathan's sake. I will give you back all the land of your grandfather Saul, and you will always be able to eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed to David again. Mephibosheth said, You are being very kind to me, your servant, and I am no better than a dead dog. Then King David called Saul's servant Seba. David said to him, 
I've given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You, your sons and your servants will farm the land for Mephibosheth. You will harvest the crops. Then your master's grandson will have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, will always be able to eat at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Ziba said to King David, I am your servant. I will do everything my master the king commands me. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table as if he were one of the king's sons. And that's the story of how King David helped Mephibosheth. King David helped Mephibosheth. Mm -hmm. Sandra, mm -hmm. you know Mephibosheth, he said, I'm a dead dog. What did he mean? Why does he say he's a dead yeah. dog? It's because he didn't think much of himself. Because when he was younger, he'd, when he was a child, he had an accident and became crippled so he couldn't walk. But but that's not his fault. It's not his fault. But you know, God cares about everybody. God cares about everybody. He cares about yes. everybody, no matter what. And God sent someone to help him. Yes. God sent someone to help yeah, him. Yeah, King David helped him. Does God care about everyone? He cares about everyone. He cares about you. Have you ever been helped? I've been helped. You know, Sandra, sometimes I think, I think I'm not very good. Yeah, but... To God, you are very good. You're special. I'm special. Mm. special to God, to you're God. special, yeah. Everyone is special to God. And God cares about everyone. He cares about everyone being helped. And you know, God can also get us or help us to help others. I want to help others, mm. that. Yeah. Because everybody's special to God. Everyone's special to God. And you know, even when um, we were in lockdown, lots of people helped each other by making dinners or going shopping. And we had those who worked in hospital, in the care homes, helping people. It's good to help people. It's good to help. It's also good for us to ask Jesus to help us. Jesus can help us and Jesus can help us was to help others. I want Jesus to help me. I want Jesus to help me to help others. Yeah, shall we pray then? Let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to help us and Lord also to help us to help others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That was a good story, Sandra. Oh, I'm really glad that you like that. I want Jesus to help me and I want mm. to help others. Oh, Bye, Sandra. Bye, Fox. Bye, see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.